Today is June 29th and Bank of America had just received another bomb threat. Right now I doesn't I don't know if the bomb threat is real or not. Captain Whitney, what happened at Bank of America today? Well, about 10.58 this morning, uh, the close police dispatch received a call from bank staff from Bank of America, uh, 2720 North Prince Street. Uh, this is in reference to a, uh, a bomb threat that had been called in, but it wasn't the traditional bomb threat. Uh, what the caller, uh, which was a female caller, said was asked the question to the bank member uh, whether or not uh, they were the bank that had had a um, bomb threat before, a few days ago. And she replied yes and said, well, there's going to be a real bomb, uh, that it wasn't there right now, but it would be brought in today. Um, and that was the extent of the call. Um, then, of course, uh, officers were dispatched up there, detectives. Um, the, uh, the bank was searched three times uh, by staff and officers and uh, nothing was found there in the bank of a suspicious nature. Um, the bank uh, did not request for a, a bomb dog to come through the, the bank or anything. Uh, wanted to return to business, so um, that's what's going on right now. They've returned back to business. And uh, what we're doing, because of the, the nature of the threat, which was basically that it's not there now, but it would be brought in, uh, we do have an officer and detective stationed up there, and they'll be up there for the rest of the day. Uh, to monitor any, anything going on at the bank, so um, that's what we're doing with that. But uh, that's what's going on right now. The call was traced uh, back to 11th and Mitchell to a payphone there, and detectives are investigating that right now to see if they can uh, find out whether through their video. I don't, I don't know if it was an inside or outside payphone at this point. So, uh, but they're going to see if they can't maybe find something on video or see if a clerk or somebody else may have seen who was placed that call. So we do at least know it's definitely a female. Okay. And 11th and Mitchell, that's the location of the convenience store. Also, right, also it's convenience store. And that's similar to the last threat in that you had a female caller calling from a payphone. Right, similar. Okay, yeah. so we but, believe they're connected? Or? Well, the thing is, given uh, given with what's happened in London right now, uh, with that, uh, that bomb being discovered there, it could be a copycat sort of thing where they're just got the person to think about doing something like this. So right now we don't know. It's, that's what's under investigation to see if we can't find out. So right now I can't say, for, can't say that it would be the same person uh, because you got the coincidence with what's going on in London today. So, uh, so I don't know. And the officers that are stationed at the bank, are they going to be checking mail deliveries, deposits, all of that? Or are they just no, going to be observing from a distance? Just, just observing what's going on. The officers, the officers will be up there, like I said, at the location. So uh, they're there for the bank staff and for just anything that seems uh, out of place and to be a presence so that people know that they're there. Okay. Are there other consistencies between the two incidents that you guys have found as far as... Well, it's, it's still under yeah, still under investigation. I mean, that that much information I don't know because that's what they're still out gathering right now and finding out. So that's the basic information I have right now. Okay. And uh, are you familiar with the statute regarding bomb threats? What would the penalty be? I understand the last person that did something like this, I, I think they served around uh, 18 months. I believe at Clovis Community College mm -hmm. would have been the, um, and it, it is a felony. Okay. Yeah. And so they're looking at anywhere from one to... Right, and, and you can have aggravated circumstances. There's a lot given to that because, of course, it would depend on uh, you, there had to be a trial first and the person convicted and then be up to the judge for sentencing anyway. But, uh, but it, would def it is a felony, though. Okay. And so anytime you have an incident like this, you guys are going to respond similarly where, you know, you're going right. to go through all the precautionary steps and close right. down the business. Right. And the other point to remember with that is uh, in a case like that, it is still... Uh, the call of the property owner as to what's done about the bomb threat. As far as whether or not we search, whether or not they evacuate and all that, that's their property and it's their decision, not ours. So under no circumstances are you like you guys allowed to come in and say we have a dangerous situation, we're taking over? No. It's completely up to right. the, the only that case that would, state law? Well if that were the case, the only case we do that is a public, an actual public building. Um, 
to where it's a public safety issue, where it's our responsibility, it would be like a city building or if a county or state, it would be their decision to make that, but not ours. Okay, so in this case, you guys pulled out because Right, that's they private felt property, and it's their, their decision what they do, whether they evacuate, yeah. whether they were searched. That's totally their decision, not ours. Okay. Which, as I said, they don't want the bomb dog, they don't want the bomb dog brought in, so that was their decision that we have no say in that. Okay, so you were prepared to go full out? Right, whatever they in. want, whatever they would want us to do, we would do. Well, thank you.